All right, hello guys, welcome to today's video. If you're new here, hi, hello, I'm Nips, a freelance artist. And if you are returning, welcome back, Nippies, to today's video, which is going to be another D&D &D speed paint. So for those of you that don't know, I recently started a D&D &D campaign with my friends. I joined an ongoing campaign, so they had to level up my character to level six, I believe it was at the time. And if you wanna see more about my character, character creation, I went ahead and put the link down in the description or I'll make it the suggested video at the end of this video as well so you guys can see my character and just talk a little bit about the campaign. Here, I ended up doing some scenes from some of the sessions that we've done. There is this little slime girl named Renali who's taken a liking to my character Kaxar and they have also taken a liking to Renali and she does this thing where she's just super happy, kind of like pushy in an energetic, very endearing and sweet way. And they kind of cracked through Kaxar's kind of, I guess like defensive wall, like that edgy defensive wall I don't know but um she'll always do it by putting hand out and kind of you know wanting to shake their hand and so in this little comic I wanted to draw out the scene where Kaxar finally shakes her hand but she's like all slimy so they end up with a bunch of <laughs> goop on their hand and stuff These doodles were all done on Procreate, as you can see, which is a program on the iPad. A lot of people ask me whether I prefer iPad over the Cintiq, and I always tell them that it really depends on what your goal is and what your kind of like what you want in your art. I personally would not pick one over the other. I think it just depends on what I'm drawing that makes me choose a different tablet. Normally I have the iPad because I tend to feel more loose on there. I feel like my sketches flow better. I feel more comfortable. I feel less pressure to create artwork that is super hyper polished. I do feel like the Cintiq has kind of conditioned me to just see it as a refined piece kind of tablet. So a lot of the things that, a lot of the finished products and just more polished products tend to be on the Cintiq for me. And so also the fact that my Cintiq does not have portability. I don't have the, I used to have the old one where you could take it with you, but it was really heavy. And I use the iPad for that purpose specifically, which is just portability. And the iPad weighs absolutely nothing. It's just so easy. It's like carrying a notebook. I have the older version and honestly, it still works pretty well. A lot of people ask me if I'm gonna update and honestly, I don't really see myself updating anytime soon unless like money falls out of the sky where I'm like, oh, might as well. But other than that, honestly, it works just fine the way it is at the version that it's at. So this next piece is going to be, originally I wanted to make this one kind of like a comic as well, and then I ended up just doing it 
as like a frozen moment rather than a paneled one. And in this one, we have a character named Freya. I'll put the finished products and the finished products will have the tags of the creators of the characters in the tweet. So um, yeah. So this character is Freya, who is an artificer, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong, I'm still new. I still don't really know like the, the labels of like the types of characters that they are, but she has a mechanical dog named Fenrir. And apparently every time they fight, because I came in the middle of a campaign and Fenrir always like quote unquote dies, right? And Freya always has to like rebuild him and put him back together. Hacks are, I think I talked about it in the last video, where they have a pet that they lost that they're on the search for named Pep. And so they have kind of like a soft spot for pets, you know, and um, Fenrir during one battle dies, like gets split in half and Kaxar goes to basically TLDR pick up Fenrir's pieces in the middle of the fight and brings it to Freya, all worried because obviously they don't know that this dog has died several times before and they don't know that it just comes back, you know? And so they're super worried. And this is still pre pretty early in Kaxar's entrance into the campaign. So it's one of those like, not very characteristic of them to be this emotional. Like it's just a cute moment where where Kaxar's just giving her Fenrir's head, all the like cables and stuff and the dead eyes and, and everything. And Freya's just kind of like, I see that you care and I appreciate it, but Fenrir's gonna be fine. I'm just gonna put him back together later. So like, don't worry about it. It's one of those like comforting, but like reassurance all in one. I feel like I didn't do it that much justice to be quite honest. I feel like I was having a lot of trouble with like the proportions and like the anatomy, but also keeping it very sketchy. I feel like I got very impatient with the line quality and with like, like I feel I'm super rusty right now. I have, I, I have this conversation literally every time I stream that I'm just super rusty as far as like my lines and my anatomy goes. I definitely want to do a practice stream at some point to just, get back into the groove because right now I feel like my poses are very stiff. My anatomy is not very tangible. Like the shapes aren't very accurate and just there's so much going on. So I feel like right now I'm struggling to draw quote unquote very basic things that I normally don't or shouldn't struggle with, I guess. So this is kind of a, a visual representation of the struggles of my uh, anatomy slash composition slash shapes and all of that. It was so hard for me to not add color to the comic strip of Renali and, and Kaxar. I think the amount of life that color adds to a piece is so, like I just can't explain it. Like mood lighting, like whether you're using cold, cold lighting, warm lighting, like where you're putting the, the coals, the cools and the warms. I just absolutely love color and it's so hard for me to just stop at black and white and be like, oh, this is fine. <laughs> This is fine. We don't have to go any further. We don't have to waste another two hours, but more than likely I will because I just love it. I absolutely love it. And I already had the idea that I wanted with this one. They were in this kind of like ice field with like ice, like skeletons and stuff. And so I really wanted that like snow falling in the back.
I had some issues because I wanted to add some details, like where some of like the fallen monsters and some of like our teammates may maybe. But not only was I not drawing it right, but I just, I figured it would be a little too distracting. So I ended up just erasing all of it and um, keeping it rather blank. That's another thing I have to work on. I have to practice my backgrounds. I am just not the best. I just realized how boring my commentary is. Like, I don't really, I don't really say anything. Like, nothing is really funny. It's just me galaxy braining my art for like 10 minutes every week. Let me know down below. What do you guys think of my commentary? Is it annoying? <laughs> I try to be insightful, but I can't tell. So here I'm adding some backlighting. I have I have a weakness with backlighting. I think backlighting is so beautiful and like the mood that it creates is so unlike, like I just really like harsh lighting is what I like. I don't know what it's called. Is it rim light? Like a rim light? I basically like any sort of like lighting from the back, from the bottom, from the top, like that type of lighting where it's mostly dark and just really like accents of light, I think creates such a beautiful mood. So I typically, especially during these like cropped out scenes, I tend to always reach for backlighting. And I think it might be something I'm crippled by at this point. I feel like I need to expand and just learn a little bit more about color theory and different types of moods and lightings, backgrounds, etc. So here I'm just adding the, the lights, the finishing touches, the highlights, changing the line art cuddle, color, adding some, some blush, some darker shadows, chopping off the bottom. And yeah, so that is another moment in our D&D &D campaign. I hope you guys enjoyed today's stream. I'm sorry if I rambled a little too aimlessly. Again, I feel I still feel like I'm pretty rusty with my commentary. I just came back to doing videos again. So I feel like I'm still finding my way in style with the commentary. So let me know what you guys think. I did make a pinned comment yesterday about the content that I'm making right now. So right now I know most of my content is speed paints with commentary, but I'm doing this until we get monetized, which is very soon. So I wanna say thank you so much to everyone who has subscribed. We are really close to being monetized and I think then I will start doing a little bit more of like YouTube specific content. So not just speed paints. So that way we have a, a little bit more variation and a little bit more informative of a video than just commentary. Let me know what you guys think down below. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully you guys will see more D&D art soon. I'll keep telling you guys about it. I'll put all the links down below. So go ahead and follow me on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, all at Art by Nips. And on Twitch at Onips, I have all the links down below, my comic down below as well. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you guys next week. Bye.